Greetings, ladies and metal gentlemen. Welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Earth Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Terrans and Humans, The Nature of Earth, written by Poseidon underscore underscore. The Terrans are an old and powerful lineage, though we're something of an anomaly amongst the Galact community. While well, each and every Terran can trace their roots back to one planet, Earth, a newcomer would be forgiven for thinking each of them came from the separate corners of the cosmos. The Canids, the Felids, the Katakai, the Molluscai, the various Semi, and the countless others were all tribes of Terrans that bickered and fought over territory, technology, and riches. Some were aquatic, some were boreal. The Corvus could even fly. But between all of them, there is one world that is off-limits for conflicts. One world... That is neutral territory, even between tribes with blood feuds going back generations. Earth, the birthplace of them all. It is common for Terrans to make a pilgrimages to Earth at least once in their lives, and entry is forbidden to all non-Terrans. Sol is one of the most heavily fortified systems in the galaxy, with one unified military authority protecting it and other star systems within 30 light years. The Grand Army of Sol consisted of all tribes of Terrans, and the worlds under their protection were the most peaceful in all Terran space. The Terran philosophy of speaking softly while carrying a big stick enabled these systems to become hubs of commerce and innovation, forming what is now known as the Terra Firma. Species from all over the galaxy had come to live in the Terra Firma systems as well, though none were allowed on Earth. In the last 6,000 years, only one species has been foolish enough to try and see Earth with their own eyes. Yithvaki, the species of bulbous heads and beady eyes, coveted knowledge. The forbidden nature of Sol only served to elevate its value in their eyes, and with each passing cycle, their desire to see it grew. It began small, with stealth craft attempting to penetrate the Terran line of defense, Spies would attempt to stow away on ships bound for Earth. Large telescopes were constructed to peer towards the Sol system, if only to observe how it existed hundreds of thousands of years in the past. All attempts ended in failure. The stealth craft were destroyed, the spies expelled from Terran space or killed, and the telescopes destroyed just before they would have become operational. Each failure drew more of the Terran's ire, sanctions being heaped upon the Yathfaki. Being punished for seeking knowledge of Earth only served to elevate knowledge of Earth from being an intense desire to an obsession. With subterfuge having failed, the Yathfaki prepared for war. They stoked the divisions between the tribes of Terrans, hoping to take advantage of the disunity. They built fleets far from Terran space to avoid detection. They transitioned their economies to boost production of war material. When they were satisfied with their preparations, one of the largest fleets in galactic history set forth for Fortress Earth. The first line of defense they encountered in the Lothian system was far stronger than they expected. But the element of surprise was on their side. They obliterated the fleet of the Grand Army stationed there, but only after a week of grueling battle. The walls and skirmishes stoked by the Yathfaki evaporated overnight. In the time it took for the Yathfaki to eliminate a fourth fleet of the Grand Army of Sol, every Terran on every world became aware of what was happening. The Yathfaki's thirst for Earth at this point was common knowledge, and all knew what their objective was. The results of the Yathfaki invasion still reverberate to this day and the Yathvaki are still confined to their home planet under careful watch of the Terrans. The Yathvaki fleet was one of the largest ever assembled for battle in the galactic history. The Terran fleet that assembled in response remains the largest fleet ever assembled for battle in galactic history, dwarfing the record holder for second place by orders of magnitude. All Terran militaries, whether multi-tribal or single, quickly mobilized for the next Terra Firma system in the Yathfaki path, what is now known as Terra Victorium. When asked why they assembled in the next system, any Terran alive today will still be able to tell you why, or rather, show you. 
Admiral Marcus Circanium, upon engaging the Ithaki fleet in the Lothian system, sent an emergency broadcast to the rest of the Grand Army. In one of the most famous holocausts ever, he stated that the Ithaki have appeared in Lothia with a massive fleet. Do not send reinforcements. I repeat, do not send reinforcements. They are headed for Earth. We will buy you the time we can. Avenge us. Today, the Lothian system is home to one of the largest war memorials in the galaxy. A solid wall of platinum orbits the Lothian star, with the names of each of every member of the Fourth Fleet engraved upon it, and avenged the Fourth Fleet, the Terrans did. The Grand Army sent messengers to every Terran system with copies of Admiral Sucanium's Holocaust. Battles were halted, wars were paused, and skirmishes were ceased. Enemies joined fleets and beelined for Terra Victorium. So many ships entered the system that several planetary orbits are permanently altered from their gravitational effects. Grand Army officers took temporary command of other Terran Star Nations militaries, all to coordinate an overwhelming defense. Perhaps more terrifying than this being by far the largest fleet ever assembled, half the ships never arrived in Terra Victorium. Instead, they gathered in Arcturus, the third line of defense. If they had engaged in combat, they would have become the second largest fleet ever assembled for battle. However, the Terrans in Terra Victorium ensured it never came to that. Admiral Sicanium promised to buy time for Terrans to defend their ancestral home, and buy time he did. Outnumbered and outgunned, Sicanium pulled out every trick in the Terran book, and invented several more. Hit-and-run tactics, kamikaze attacks, and zombie ships all harried the Yathaki, preventing the continuation of their quest for Earth. The civilians in the Lothian system took up arms as well, with vast stockpiles of weapons being unearthed from vaults and storerooms, and anything with a sublight drive being mobilized off-planet. The scars are still visible in Lothian II from the orbital bombardment, proudly displayed by the people of that system even today. But in the end, Admiral Sarkanium was killed along with the rest of the Fourth Fleet, save the enduring wrath and watchful Titan. As the last ships of the Fourth Fleet, they had been ordered to retreat and inform the rest of the Grand Army of the Fourth Fleet's demise. When they arrived in Terra Victorium, the Terrans gathered there knew that soon the Yathvaki would learn the error of their ways. Ships clouded every vector into Terra Victorium blotting out the star in many places from the sheer numbers. While the Yuthfaki enjoyed a 10 to 1 advantage in Lofia, they were outnumbered 100 to 1 upon arriving in Terra Victorium. 1.3 billion ships were lying in wait. The fangs of the canids and felids were dripping with saliva. The hands of the semi were clenched in fists of rage. And the corvid's tail feathers flitted in anticipation. Later, non-Terran witnesses would swear by whatever deity they believed in that they could feel the bloodlust emanating from the space around them. It took a week for Yathvaki to destroy Fourth Fleet. The Yathvaki fleet was destroyed in one day. So much ammunition flew through the system in those hours that a cloud of kinetics can still be found drifting through deep space below the galactic plane. Some will tell you that isolated Yathfaki ships broadcasted surrenders, and these rumors disquieted many of stellar neighbor of the Terrans. Many outsiders will point out the oddity of there being a grand total of zero prisoners of war taken from that battle. Very few ever raised the issue, having seen what's become of the Yathfaki and wanting no part of it. When the battle was over, many of the different tribes returned home. Some even resumed the battles they had put on hold to defend against the Yathfaki. But the remainder went to each Yathfaki system and research outpost, and returned them to their homeworld. Nominally, those systems still belong to the Yathfaki. However, they are empty worlds, kept vacant by the Terran fleets that guard them. The Yathfaki have not left their homeworld in 1,200 years, though the Grand Army of Sol has stated that they'll finally be released soon. But why defend Earth so heavily? Why prohibit all non-Terrans from even setting foot in the system? 
The answer lies in the origins of the Terrans themselves. How did Terrans come to be found in such a variety of shapes and forms? Is there a true original form that some modified? What sane species would induce such radical changes? Not just once, but repeatedly. Humans, not Terrans, but humans, the original species of Earth. They can no longer be found in the wider galaxy. Some theorize that their last vestiges are kept on Earth for safekeeping. What is known is that originally the Terrans lived side by side with the humans, who created them. Each tribe of Terran was a separate sub-sapien species on Earth. It was the humans, one of the first species to reach the galactic stage, who uplifted them in their search for companions amongst the stars. Records of that time indicate a golden age of prosperity for Terrans, expanding and establishing the terra firma. However, upon contact with another species, a plague swept through the human population. It lurked in their bodies, using them to spread to others before rapidly worsening, and often resulting in the demise of the host. Those it did not kill, it rendered infertile. As time passed, the remaining humans died without leaving behind descendants. The human species slowly declined into effective extinction. Perhaps an enclave exists on Earth, protected by the Terrans of today. Perhaps Earth only contains the tombs of their creators. Aliens such as us may never know, with nary official whisper from the Terrans. Rumors about their drunken admissions, shady Terrans attempted to sell the information, and then an outsider who managed to sneak through. However, there is no way to confirm what is true and what is fantasy without being able to journey to Earth itself. No way to ascertain the true nature of Earth. And most likely, there never will be. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.